Welcome back to the kitchen table of Silver Surf Wax for Silver Surf Wax Sunday. What I thought I'd do here is I have cleaned up a bunch of my Mercury Dime collection, my Mercury Dime project here on the road to 7,000 Mercury Dimes or 500 ounces of Mercury Dimes. And as I went and sorted through the last purchase, I have put everything in its year and mint mark and I totaled everything up. And so I thought I would go and just review the Mercury Dime project. But in addition to that, I pulled out all of the remaining uh, uh, junk silver and, you know, Roosevelt uh, dimes as well as half dollars, quarters, barber dimes uh, and uh regular uh, standing, these couple of standing Liberty and uh, Barber uh, quarters. And I thought I would just total everything up and see where we're at, see where we're at. Um, so basically a um, junk silver uh, full stack. What's what's the junk silver full stack look like? So I thought I'd walk through this with you as you're uh, following me through my, my journey here. I do appreciate it. And uh, so let's take a look, let's get into it. And uh, what I'll do uh, with this video is I'll, I'll sort of review uh, what we've got and how much in each, and then we'll total it up at the end. So I thought we'd start over here with some of these uh, Mercury Dimes that had no dates. And, uh, you know, basically just, just slicks. You can't tell uh, any of these have got dates at all or you know just I couldn't I couldn't determine I couldn't I couldn't read it so you know see, see if we can find an example of this one that's in the light you know and it looks like a 1917 I would give that one actually I I probably would nowadays I think I'd uh I'd uh I'd mark that one in the camera that one's you know extremely difficult that other one right over here is extremely difficult to tell what we got there what do we got here? Anyway, so anything that I couldn't really tell or wasn't 100% positive, because, you know, maybe that's 1916, who knows? I, I went ahead and put it in the uh, no date category. I also have uh, a bunch of, of ones that looked very strange. Now, you might be interested in this. So, I had some air dimes in here. And I'm sorry for the for wobbling around, but I don't have this on the tripod. I'm just trying to get this up close. So obviously this one, uh, super uh, acid. Like there were some really strange. Uh, let's see if I can find what I'm looking for. This is very difficult to do. So so look at this look at this particular dime, and it almost looks like it the metal delaminated. I'm not sure if that's getting into focus. Right there at the top, it's like the metal delaminated and it's all like almost like pressured, pressure uh, coming apart. I'm not gonna be able to, here, shoot, shoot, shoot. Can you tell that? So it, it looks like that's almost a natural air where the dime is was crushed or there was a fracture in the minting process and that's what it looks like to me. And I saw a couple of these when they, when they, when it, it struck me that they were, um, you know, particularly damaged in this way. This one had almost like a melting on it. I don't know if that has anything to do with in production, but boy, that looked weird. So I just kind of saved these odds and ends ones. I'm not really sure. Uh, if I have anything here, I think this one had a crack in it. Let's see if I can find what I'm looking for. I really should have done this ahead of time. But some of these really strange divots uh, in the dimes, boy, that's not focusing, um, made me curious as to if I should just hold on to these weirdos and put them in a separate little, little, um, little organization. And... Then I also have, I found a number of 1945 micro S's. So what is it? I got like five or six of these things. Yeah, I got six micro S's. I'm not sure. Oh, here, let's get this in frame. Sorry, guys. Not very skilled with the camera there. You can kind of tell right, right here that tiny, tiny S 
on the 1945s. So I've got a number of these, about six of these. They call them the Micro S. So just happened to search through all the 1945 S's to find the Micro S's, and I have six of them. I don't think they're particularly valuable, but I definitely wanted to separate them out. So I went ahead and did that, and then I, you guys can kind of see here. Let me see if I can organize my camera a little bit. You know, 1916, 1916S, 1917, D, S, D, S. And I went through the whole, um, the whole year range for the Mercs. And when I filled up a tube, I put them back into the 50 containers and I counted up, you know, here's zero because I just happened to run out. Um, uh, making a new uh, container back here. So I ended up, in terms of the mercury dimes that are in these tubes, with, um, let's see if you can read that, 580 face value, 580 face or 5,800 mercury dimes in this format. In addition to that, I filled four, four books. I didn't fill them. I, I, I started out with my best, I went through and looked at, at which ones were the best, you know, which one had full full bands, if any, and what was the best out of every year in mint mark. And so I went ahead and put all of these uh, dimes in these books. And for, some, for many of these books, I'm missing something. I, for all of the books, I'm in, missing the 1916D. For every single, uh, I'm book. I'm missing this 1916D, and for most all of them, except for the first book, I'm missing the 21 and 21D, and I do have the 21 on this book, but not the 21D, and I do do have the 31D, but on these ones I don't, uh, and then. The 30S, don't have it, and the rest of them I have. So, um, on all the, so recapping again, on all the books, I don't have a 1916D. That's a pretty expensive coin to get. It's cost you 500 to a grand to, to pull off one of those if you wanted to buy one. But I did find a lot of the 1926S and the 19... Um, uh, 21 D and 1921s. I found some of those uh, semi rare key dates. So when I add all of that together, I come up with 295 dimes out of those four books or 2950 face. So that's kind of, uh, you know, and adding those together, the 2950 plus I'm over 6,000 dimes, right? I'm uh, 6,000. 95 dimes. So in terms of trying to get to the 7,000 dime project, I am 100 face value or 1,000 dimes away, or really, you know, uh, 905 dimes away from finishing the Mercury project, Mercury dime project, uh, to get me 500 ounces of Mercury dimes. So Big effort, getting closer. So basically another $1,500 in Mercs and I'm done. And I just have to find a good price for them. So now moving on to the remainder, I do have still a bunch of Roosevelt's. I ended up with uh, 1,760 Roosevelt dimes or 177.60 face. And so I got all of these Roosevelt dimes um, and uh, I'll just keep collecting these. So in, in reality, I have more than 700 or, uh, or, or sorry, 7,000 dimes uh, total. I just want them all in mercury dimes. So I could call it a day. I could say, hey, look at this. I got 500 ounces of silver in, in silver dimes and I'm ready to, I'm done. I'm done with this. But I think I'm going to see it through for mercury dimes and if I end up with a few Roosevelt's and a few Barber's uh, in the mix, then so be it. And so all of these Barber's I've picked up um, just happenstance. You know, they just happen to be in the rolls or the bags. So I got a buck 50 in Barber dimes and they're pretty cool. I mean, the dates on these things are pretty fun to look at. 
see if I can get, you know, there's a 1916, there's some 1800 in here somewhere. There's a 1911. You know, I should start flipping all these over. Okay, I think I will. So bear with me as I hopefully can keep this camera in focus while I'm trying to touch dimes, 1906. Let's see if I can flip these over for you. So just kind of cool. I never set out to buy uh, barbers or some of these older, more numismatic purchases that are a little, have a little more expense on, a little more premium on them that, you know, just not my cup of tea, but it is kind of cool to pick these up. There's an 1800, I see it right there. Okay, let's get my finger, fat fingers out of the way. There's an 1896 and a, a, a 1908. And so that's pretty sweet, kind of fun stuff. Here's another 18, can I touch that? Okay, all right guys. So there's a 1899, so pretty fun. Uh, obviously these are pretty slicked out and the silver content is lower. So for me as a metal stacker, you know, I, I can't get excited about the, the silver, but you know, maybe someday I turn these in and get more silver, get some bullion, get some more mercury dimes, who knows? And, uh, you know, speaking of that, I kind of am thinking, okay, well, maybe I'd keep this nice book for myself, but maybe I sell these books. Maybe I get rid of this on eBay, you know, sort of a hundred dollars or, you know, I I'm, I'm guessing that that with 70 plus dimes per book, you know, you might get a hundred dollar, it might be a hundred dollar space, but you know, because of the key, key dates in there, semi key dates, it might go for two, $300 per book. So what do I do? Do I, uh, take some of these books and try to sell them on, on eBay and then, uh, turn it into more silver? Maybe, maybe that's what I do. I haven't really decided, but it is sort of enticing to try to do that. Although, you know, I don't want any problems on eBay. All right, moving on. So that's the dimes all done. Let's do the quarters. Um, turns out I have $23.25 face in quarters, and that's including these couple of Standing Liberty and Barber quarters that I ended up just picking up happenstance along the way. And so that's kind of fun. To, to have some of these these guys, even though I didn't set out to get them. And I can't, let me just take a look at the dates on this. No 1800s. Um, yeah, I can't even read dates on these guys. So yeah, so there, there's a dealio with the quarters. And then we've got the uh, half dollars. I've got the, the Benjamin Franklin, the Walking Liberties, and the Roosevelts here, and the, the BU Roosevelts, where um, these are brilliant uncirculated. So super clean, shiny. I won't even pull them out and touch them. And uh, I'll just leave them alone. And maybe I'll sell this to someone who's interested. If I find a buyer, and I get a decent premium for BU, maybe I unload these and get myself, I don't know, more Mercs or <laughs> more uh, more uh, Walker half dollars or something, you know, I'm not really sure, but I, I kind of I kind of like to standardize and maybe maybe I'll dump the Kennedys, you know, they're, they're, they are cleaner, but the older coins are, are kind of cool. I like the Walkers quite a bit. In fact, that's the logo, that's the, uh, that's the Silver Surf Wax logo. So yeah, so I ended up with uh, seventy-two fifty in in uh, halves. So putting it all together, and we got ourselves eight hundred and eighty-four and thirty-five cents face value in junk silver. So not quite a thousand dollars in junk silver, but we're closing in on it. And with another hundred dollars face. And Mercury Dimes, which is my next intended purchase, we're going to get close to that $1,000 total in junk silver. And I don't know if you guys had watched my full stack video uh, over a year ago. I had very little 
uh, constitutional, and I was kind of surprised at that. I thought I had more constitutional. I do remember turning some in and exchanging it, and uh, uh, but I didn't think it was that much. Anyway, if you assume right now, I think we're seeing in the uh, coin stores, the local LCSs and online, at least 1350 face value. Uh, if we average a 1350 face value, then the uh, total US dollar value for this junk silver on the table here is $11,938.73. That's a guesstimate, and uh, you can see that uh, that price changes quite a bit, and it just went up. Uh, so just over uh, uh, the markets just opened here Sunday night, and we saw silver price jump up a little bit. So I'm kind of, I think, conservative with that 1350 face value. At, at the moment, but we'll see. Markets are changing, things are getting wild out here. Uh, we'll see how silver fares. So that's my junk silver full stack. And I thought I would, uh, since I had it out and got it organized and spent a lot of time uh, playing with this stuff, I thought I would uh, uh, let you guys know. So tell me what you think in the comments. Tell me what you think about selling these books, maybe trying to sell these BUs kind of get, get rid of all this prettiness and get some nasty junk silver. Just, you know, it's too bad because these don't look that hot. I mean, they don't look that great, you know, just in, in two rolls. They sure are easier to work with than loose silver. And I feel like I'm a lot more organized this way, but at the same time, it's, it's not very pretty. When you when you lay out some, some silver like this, that kind of looks nice, feels nice, looks like treasure, doesn't it? But uh, in these plastic tubes and, and with blue tape over everything, it kind of, hmm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I like it as much. You know, I'm, I'm organized, but I'm not kind of happy with my, uh, with uh, like a nice bag of silver you pour out and spills over the whole place. So anyway, uh, give me your thoughts on that. I was wondering if my uh, estimate there uh, was was reasonable or in line, so I decided to to check it out. So I went ahead and uh, did a little research and went online to see how much it would cost me if I wanted to buy eight hundred and eighty four dollars face value of junk silver, and the results were pretty interesting. Um, and I wanted to try to do it as close to what I currently had. So I was looking to go out there and figure out, okay, this many mercury dimes, this many Roosevelt dimes, this many quarters, and uh, walkers and Benjis and Kennedys and maybe even the BU. And I found that this task was exceedingly difficult because the online bullion dealers are just wildly out of stock on many of these items. So to come up with an answer wasn't as easy as I thought. I couldn't just create that shopping list and go out there. And in fact, uh, silver.com, you know, doesn't have any junk silver. So we, they're out of the running. Uh, I often go to this uh, website, comparesilverprices.com. I think there's a bunch of similar ones to this, but I like this one because it usually includes the bullion dealers that I have bought from before, which is silver.com, BGASC, SD Bullion I buy from a lot, Provident and JM Bullion I've bought from before, and I've also bought from Gold Silver before. Um, I, I've never purchased anything from Kitco, and I have purchased from Atmax. So I've really purchased from all of these ones. This is pretty great. One thing I really like about this website is that you, it kind of shows the percentage of premium. Notice when you uh, scroll, I can do this, I can do this. When you scroll to the top here, you can see, hey, American Silver Eagle, Canadian, right? So it's kind of trying to find the prices for these um, items. And you'll notice that, oh, here's the best price in green. And um, it's a 55% premium on American Silver Eagles, which is way higher than normal. Back in the day, you were seeing 20% premiums, which still is crazy to me. I don't know why anyone buys Silver Eagles at these super high premiums. But this is compare shopping, and sometimes the, this, this website doesn't do a good job. Sometimes you'll go on to SD Bullion and you'll find a deal where their little, you know, their little algorithms looking in a certain 
part of SD Bullion's website, but if they have a sale, they they're not looking at that for that at that sale price. So sometimes this is worth just you know doing an initial overview, and then when I want to figure out what I would like to purchase, I'll hit all these sites up individually um, to 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 make sure that it has my my price. You notice over here uh, is the junk silver column. So you're seeing that on average for a uh, hundred dollars. Let's see. Let's scroll back up here again. Oh, I can do this. For a hundred dollars silver bag at ninety percent silver, you know you're averaging fifteen hundred, fifteen fifty, or fourteen seventy eight at SD Bullion for their pricing. So you could really go and say, hey, I got eight hundred and eighty face and multiply it times 1478 times eight, and then try to figure out you know the delta in between and come up with your number. But I wanted to try to see if I could get a little closer to what uh, I'm actually purchasing. So right here, I just tried to go to SD Bullion again, and they are wildly out of stock. If I try to put 157, Mercury Dimes in there, well, they've got like 12 rolls in stock. And uh, so I went ahead and did Roosevelt's and, you know, 157 rolls, $14,000. So my initial guesstimate at 35, 13.50 face and $12,000 uh, or 11,935 by that measure was way off, right? If I go trying to go to SD Bullion and get uh, the the best price that I can, um, I, I'm looking at 14 grand instead. So I checked out Provident and I tried to get a little more fancy. And you notice that I have um, purchased the lowest cost um, that I could, just $100 face junk silver, eight bags, eight bags of $100 face, and then eight. $10 face, and then one to make up the difference at $5 face. So I didn't quite get to uh, 880, I did quite, I got $885 face value based on this quote. And this quote is 13,373. And again, that's with sort of this random, uh, $100 face value bag. So not all the walkers and all the mercury dimes, right? That, so pretty good price over here, but still not exactly what I purchased. So I went ahead and tried some other sites to see if I could get a little closer and I really couldn't. And so I had to do eight bags here plus 88 uh, $1 and I'm at 13,760. So still a far cry from 12,000 that I was uh, guesstimating. And then I also, this was about the, this is about the closest I could get. I still had to do eight $100 face bags, but then I went and I found a, a BU2, a BU tube of uh, Franklin halves, right? And uh, right up here and, uh, added some Kennedy, half dollars to try to make up the total of 888 um, or 85. Uh, and I was at still at uh, 13,296. So I really didn't do so, so hot here, or at least what we're finding online and what I have found out at the local coin store, I'm finding these online bullion dealerships are quite a bit more expensive than I expected. I think that my local coin store was offering 1350 face, which again is a lot more than I'm used to paying since I was, I've been trying to pay $12 uh, times face. Um, and that's still expensive, right? Uh, uh, you know, I, I want, I usually want 11 or less, but in these times, 12 is, is, is a dream. But 13 and 13.50 is really what I'm seeing at the coin stores. Well, this is even higher than that. So kind of nuts, kind of nuts on the premiums. But I thought you might enjoy this. This site 
kind of helps you see it's really nuts like look at this you know you you buy a monster box of silver eagles and you're still paying 47% 47.71% over spot best price online bullion 47% over spot for silver now uh they also have a gold site i don't know why i'm not shilling for these people then i'm not getting paid by these people i don't know any of these people but is just a a uh, convenient website for me. Notice that on gold eagles, only 6% over spot. And when in past times, I've seen that as low as 3%, right? So 3%, 3 to 5% over spot is what I was paying for gold eagles. Generally, I'd be finding, and that's all I purchased. I only purchased the gold eagle when I'm purchasing them just because I've kind of limited myself to that. And I noticed that spot price for some of these other weird things has had been higher. Weirdly, the uh, gold pandas have a very low premium right now. So that's pretty interesting. Obviously, these uh, these are in a different, uh, these are not in one ounce units. They're in uh, some metric uh, unit. But Kind of, kind of useful if you're interested in that, and if you have other sites that you got you use to comparison shop for online that you found interesting, please let me know because uh, I think that is fairly interesting. Again, you know, Cougarans, you know, obviously they don't have a full uh, ounce of gold in the Cougarand compared to one ounce, so so you get to kind of see. But when you're t looking at the premium, six percent, seven and a quarter percent. 4.9%. 4 These are pretty instructive ways to, to get uh, a handle on, on the price there. So anyway, that was it, guys. That's kind of the, uh, the state of the silver market today. High premiums, low spot price for silver, but you're back in the $18, $19 uh, spot, you know, uh, purchase price per ounce. Uh, when you start considering these premiums. So, all right, take care, everybody. Have a good night.